Shalom, Shalom, Akiyam. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekakwadash. I would also like to give a double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. I would also like to say peace and salutations to the hopeful elect scattered through all four corners of this earth. Let's just buy on back again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And I just want to get into a few scriptures, shedding light on how powerful the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai truly are. And with the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai being on display and being taught in its full veracity through the great men of Great Millstone, starting with the elders and apostles on down, things are starting to happen, man. You know, through this word, this devil, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, his kingdom is crumbling right before our eyes, man. And this man is in straits, like scripture said he would be, when he would be in the process of trying to fulfill his diabolical lust and trying to have everybody jab and eventually hit with that karagma, ma. But while all this is happening, while this man is crumbling right before our eyes, the tabernacle of David is being built up. And it's all through this word. You know, scripture says, with one rough word, he can destroy this man, ma. You know, let's get that. Let's start with that. In the book of Wisdom of Solomon. Salaki, I'm going to have to um, jump down to the Apocrypha. And we'll go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon. The 12th chapter. And we'll start around... We'll start at the ninth verses point. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, verse 9, and it reads, Not that thou was unable to bring the ungodly under the hand of the righteous in battle. The ungodly would be none other than who? Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Or to destroy them at once with cruel beasts. You see? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai can put the spirit on these vicious beasts to take this man out, man. Not to mention, Scripture says that the beasts are going to change their places when all hell is breaking loose. You know? Or with one rough word. You see that? And that's what we're seeing on display. We're seeing, you know, this word, you know, being, being, you know, Thrust it out there. And it's causing things to happen, man. And there's nothing this man can do about it. He can't... I mean, you know, he's trying to... You know, ban people, you know... Give you strikes, cut your channels. But every time he does that... More channels pop up. More believers, you know... Show up on the scene. Because it's all through the spirit and power. You have by Shimmy Shai. The words of the Lord are going to be fulfilled. All the prophecies are going to be fulfilled. And this man can't disown all that. No matter how hard he tries. No matter how hard this man tries, man. Let's get the book of uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. And the 29th verse, and it reads... Is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Right. This word breaks things up. You know, it's, it's breaking up these, these other philosophies. You know, it's, it's uh, Islam, uh, Buddhism, Egyptology, Christianity. You see? It's breaking up everybody's opinion. Everybody has an opinion. But it's breaking up everybody's opinion, man. 
You see? And and it's breaking up this man's kingdom, huh? What sets what sets the testimony of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai apart from any other form of doctrine is the prophecies, man. Huh? You see? And they're coming to light. They're coming to light. You know, in the land of the, in the land of our captivity, we're remembering who we are. You know, as Akiyam and Akwatha have returned back to the obedience of the scriptures. You see, that's a big prophecy that's that's be, that, that that that's being fulfilled right before our eyes. You know, that's a big prophecy being fulfilled. You know, you know this word is this word is quick and powerful, man. You can't resist it. Actually, let's get that too. Let's get Hebrews. Let's get the book of Hebrews, the fourth chapter. In the twelfth verse, and it reads, For the word of the Most High is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. So this word cuts deep. This word cuts deep. You know, when you you know when you when you hear this word, you know, for the first time, and if you ain't right, you know, if you ain't right, you're gonna get cut, man. There's no way around it, you're gonna get cut. And one or two things are gonna happen. You're either gonna get cut and you're gonna leak out. All over the place, or you're gonna you're gonna get cut. And, and, and what the hopeful elect did is we examined ourselves when we got cut, because we all got cut by this word. You know, we all got cut by this word. That's what, um, you know, that's what quickened us. It's what brought us back to life. This this, this you know being cut. You know. And the difference between the whole four elect and, you know, the, the two thirds is that they they leak out, man. They leak out all over the place, you know. And as far as these heathens starting with Esau, Edom, you know, this man, this man got a this man got a wounded spirit, man. You know, that's why he's cutting channels, cutting live streams. Giving out strikes, shadow banning. Cause this man, he's he's cut to the spirit, man. And this the scripture says, uh, a wounded spirit, a wounded spirit. Who can who can bear a wounded spirit? Let's get that real quick in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs eighteen. The book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 14, and it reads, The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a, wound, but a wounded spirit, who can bear? <laughs> and the answer to that is no one, man. You can't bear a wounded spirit. You know, that's why the suicide rate has gone up, man. Because a lot of people got wounded spirits nowadays, man. Huh. You know? And unless you got the covering of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai on you, you, you out of there, man. And it's just going to get worse. You know? Man, people's hearts going to be bursting in their chest, man. The, the, the terrors that are going to be coming upon the earth, man. <laughs> you know? Our is are, you know... Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is with us every step of the way and preserves us, Aki and Akwaf, man. You know, let's continue on in the book of Hebrews, the fourth chapter and the twelfth verse, and it reads, 
You know what? Let me start from the top. For the word of the Most High is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. So we're talking about a, a really, really deep laceration. And of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So this word understands the thoughts and intents of the mind. That word heart goes into the Hebrew word lab, which goes into mind. You see? And this is the main reason why this devil we saw Edom, the so-called white man, can't get anything past, you know, those of us in this truth. You know, starting with the elders and apostles on down. You see? Because through this word, you know, we've been quickened. You know, we've been healed. You know, we can we can see through this man like a looking glass, man. We know what this man's about. You know, we know not to trust this man. And we know it's that same nigga from the from the from the from the garden, man. It's the same serpent, man, that beguiled Eve, man. It's the same nigga. And we know these things. You know? So that's why he can't get nothing past, you know, those of us in this in this truth, man. Because this word, man, this word, it discerns, it, it, it discerns, it, it means to understand. You know? We, we know what this man is talking about in his bed chambers, man. Which is going into them, the, the secret, you know, his secret councils, man. You know, the Bilderberg meetings, so on and so forth, man, you know. But it's because we've been hailed by this word. You know, this word can, you know, it can cut you, have you leak out, or it can, it can hail you. You know, it can hail you. You know what, let's get that. And um, let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon, the 16th chapter. In the... The 12th verse, and it reads... For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health, but thy word. You see that? But thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. We were healed by the word. We were cut at first. We were cut at first, but what did we do? We examined ourselves. You know, we examined ourselves. And because we, you know, only the hopeful elect would do that. You know? Everyone else, you know, they're going to be, you know, they're going to have a wounded spirit. You know, they're going to they're gonna take it some other way. You know? They're not going to understand, you know, that their spirit is filthy and they need to clean up as far as the two-thirds are concerned. I'm referring to the two-thirds because they're heathen them through. You know what I mean? You heathen, you you out of there. You know what I mean? You're going to just have to endure, you know, what, what you got coming. You know? You know, but yeah, like I said, the two-thirds, you know, they're not going to understand that, you know, they got to examine themselves and get right. You know, but the hopeful elect, you see, we have came back to the obedience of the scriptures. You know? But first we were cut and then we were healed by this word. Because we examined ourselves, you know, and then we were quickened, we were brought to life. Let's get the book of, um, let's get the book of Psalms. Uh, 119. Let's start around.
Yeah, verse 50. You know what? Let me start. Let me start at 49. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 49, and it reads, Zane, remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Right? When we received this word, we we understood. We, we no longer, you know, called ourselves Negroes and African Americans and and, and, and Dominicans and Puerto Ricans and Cubans and Haitians and Jamaicans and Native Americans. You see, we we <laughs> came to the conclusion that we were the Hebrew Israelites, man. The true the true biblical Hebrew Israelites. The most high, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is chosen people. You see? And then it caused us to hope. To hope in what? To hope in the kingdom. To hope in being part of that first resurrection with our Lord Yahweh Shai. To hope in immortality. You see? Ultimately, the hope of salvation. When we received this word, man, it gave us hope. And now, and like scripture says, now we are prisoner, prisoners of hope. You know, and it's a beautiful thing. I'm, I'm thankful to be, you know, to have been called in the fourth quarter. You know, the Wadi Yahweh Shimi Yahweh Shai for calling me in fourth quarter, man. You know, and allowing me to, you know, receive this engrafted word that's able to save my soul, man. I am so grateful. I am so grateful. And I'm, you know, I'm doing the best I can to prove that through my actions, through my course of action. You know, and Abba Rathaza, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai continues to, continues to allow me to grow in this thing. You know, and I make my calling in my election sure, man. And I hope that for, you know, all you Akiyam and Akwath, you know. And um, yeah, I just want to put out there real quick as, you know, you Akiyam and Akwath obviously know if you're not, you know, today's the Day of Atonement. You know, it started uh, this sundown. It's my first one. Um, not to speak about myself, but I mean, just to say it's my first one and, you know, I'm, you know, pretty excited and grateful. And, you know, I appreciate the fact that I can take part, you know, in this holy, in this holy holiday, man, of ours, you know, and I'm, you know, I was fortunate enough to not have to work tomorrow, you know, so I can, you know, do a spirit in the power of Yahweh, you you know. I could just, you know, pray and read and just, you know, stay joined with the with the body, you know, throughout the course of the day. You know, Lord willing, you know, the spirit will hop on me. I can put some precepts together, you know, and make an edifying lesson for tomorrow as well, you know, because, you know, you know, it's going to be, it's not going to be easy, especially, you know, for a first timer. Not to mention, I mean, we fast. I mean, I fast, but nothing of this type of capacity, not to this capacity. Maybe I should start doing it this this intense, but needless to say, that's neither here nor there, but you know, the Wadi Haobai Shimi Shai, you know, for allowing us to be part of this, you know, beautiful opportunity to, you know, be able to actually, you know, seek salvation. You know, it's a great privilege. Psalms one nineteen verse 15 it reads this is my comfort in my affliction for thy word hath quickened me you see this is our comfort in our affliction and we are afflicted we're afflicted by Esau Edom the so called white man we're under the foot of our oppressor man you know we have no strength from our hand we have no um, standing military, we have no we have no seat on the UN. You know, we are afflicted. We are afflicted. You see, but this word gives us comfort through our affliction, and the word has brought us back to life. To be quickened means to be brought back, brought to life. 
You see? To, be, to make alive. And through this word, we've been made alive because we know who we are. We know our true identities. We know, And we know who our enemy is. <laughs> we know why we're here. You know? We know where we're going. You know? We... we we know, we know what we have in store for us, you know? We know, we know what we got to go through, you know, to get to the kingdom of heaven. And that's going to be through much tribulation. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful thing, man. You know, this word, to be able to be, you know, in the, in the counsel of the Lord, it's a true privilege. It's a true privilege because we were, you know, we were dead in our sins, and we were brought back to life through this word. And it's not of our strength. Let's get the book of Isaiah real quick. I'm going to close out on this. Um, it's a lot here for the, for the chit chat. You know. Uh, yeah, there it is. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 9. And verse 2. And it reads. The people. That walked. In darkness. Have seen a great light. And what's that light? This word. This truth. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death. And what land is that? That's America, man. This is the shadow of death, man. There's many, many ways to die in this place, man. You see? This place is nothing but confusion. That's why it's Mystery Babylon the Great, man. Babylon goes into confusion by mixing, man. You know, it's mixed with all these different philosophies, religions, you know. It's got A, B, C, D, E, F, G's all over the place, man. This place is, this place is through. It's ripe for destruction. Upon them had the light shined. You see? <laughs> the light shined on us, Akiyam and Akwa. You know? We have this we have this elite information, man. You know, this is this is divine divine information. Let me use a change of words. This is the divine this is divine information. You know, this information, this knowledge, this wisdom, this understanding. It is from the most high. This is from on high. This is not of this world, man. You see? Because you know what scriptures say, the prudent foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and not punish, because they don't have this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, man. You see? And real quick before I close, let me just get um uh is it Psalm? I think it's Psalms. Just to prove that this word is the light. Psalms 119. And I'm going to close out here. Um, so I know it's in 119. Uh, there it is. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 105, and it reads, None, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And this word is the light that's guiding us through the shadow of, through the shadow of death, man, which is this land, man, you know, with as many pitfalls. You see, but we got this light, so we see where we're going. We're not bumping our head off cabinets or jamming our toes on the corner of the bed. Because we can see with this light, man. We can see with this word. You see? And this word is going to preserve us through the times of Jacob's trouble. 
You know, Abba Roth is our preserve to the end. You know? But that's pretty much the point, Akiyam and Akwath. You know, the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you know, it it's powerful. It's powerful and it's it's making things happen. Something as simple as a word. But the where, where the word of a king is, there's power. You see, and we know these things, and that's why these things are happening through the word. You know? You know, starting with the great men of El the great men of great millstone, starting with the elders and apostles on down, pushing this word, you know, and and and, and, and sailing the elect. You know, it's causing things to happen. Abba Roth is that we're part of that precious oak. That's pretty much the point. You know, Akiyam and Akwath, you know, Lord willing, you know, you were edified. Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Kal Halalim La, Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekha Shalom Akiyam.